Coming up on 69 News at Sunrise Weekend Edition, two men are in the hospital this morning after a shooting outside the Lehigh Valley Mall. The shooter, still on the loose, will have the details. Head down to Berks County and back to the 1940s will take you to the famed World War II weekend. Fresh from their downtown studio in Easton, Mercantile Home is here to show us how they make their own everything and you can learn their tricks of the trade. Your life, your work, your news. 69 News at Sunrise, weekend edition starts now. Two men are in the hospital this morning and Whitehall police are investigating after a shooting at the Lehigh Valley Mall last night. The shooter is still on the loose. It happened around 715 outside the mall near Macy's. Police say one man fired shots, but they're still reviewing surveillance footage from multiple cameras. They say the suspect left in a vehicle, but do not have a good description of the car. One witness says a fight before the shooting seemed to escalate from a couple of men to multiple men. She also described what she saw from one of the injured victims. When I got out, the guy was already down. Something was spilling out of his abdomen, like the intestines, something from his back. Two male victims were both transported to a local hospital and their condition is not known. Anyone with information is urged to call Whitehall police. A few hours earlier and a few miles away in Allentown, another shooting. This one happened around 430 in the afternoon in the 400 block of North 9th Street near Liberty and West Gordon Streets. Only a few details on this one. Police confirmed one person was shot and is being treated at a hospital. A senior prank at a local high school could land some students in trouble with the law. State police say students blocked the driveways to Daniel Boone High School in Union Township. This included more than 30 vehicles. Police used license plates to track down the students involved. Authorities say they are working with the school district to determine whether anyone will be charged. The most serious charges against five former Penn State fraternity members arrested in the hazing related death of a pledge will not be reinstated. Prosecutors tried appealing a magistrate's decision to dismiss involuntary manslaughter charges in the death of 19 year old engineering student Tim Piazza of Huntington County, New Jersey. He died of severe head and abdominal injuries after falling several times the night of a fraternity bid acceptance party last year. A center county judge says the magistrate's decision could not be a Appealed, but said prosecutors can refile the charges. U.S. Marshals in Michigan have arrested a man wanted in Montgomery County. 36-year-old Louise Alcazar Peralta is accused of dousing his girlfriend in lighter fluid while standing within feet of her with an open flame. Hatfield Township Police say he will be extradited to Montgomery County to face assault, false imprisonment, and other charges. Authorities say on May 5th he assaulted his girlfriend, threw lighter fluid on her, and threatened to kill her. Construction begins next week to rebuild a two and a half mile stretch of Perfiomen Avenue in Berks County. PennDOT says work will start Monday in Mount Penn in the area between 23rd and 27th streets. Officials say westbound traffic will be detoured during the work. Two routes will be posted, one for passenger vehicles and one for trucks. Work will also take place on Perfiomen Avenue in Exeter Township, St. Lawrence and Redding. The project is expected to wrap up in 2019. Northampton County officials have shut down a gas station in Wind Gap over suspected problems with its fuel. The county's Department of Weights and Measures says drivers reported their car suddenly stopped or stalled after buying gas at the Sitco on South Broadway. Officials say they suspect the fuel may be contaminated with water. The station is expected to be closed for three to four days while officials test samples and figure out what action the station may need to take. Drivers who fill their tanks there on Wednesday or Thursday are asked to contact the gas station. And in Berks County, it's a weekend to reflect and for some to reenact as World War II weekend takes over the Reading Regional Airport in Burn Township. WFMZ's Tom Rader caught up with reenactors who are dedicated to telling the stories of the war. There's gonna be a great day. It's a step away from the normal stuff. Angels in the sky promise the for hundreds of reenactors at World War II weekend at the Reading Regional Airport in Burn Township. It's a challenge. It's all in the details. Trying to find the proper materials sometimes can be difficult. They use silk, they use rayon, they use cotton and wool. And sometimes the lines between recreation and reality, just like those in the stitching of the material, can blend together. She said, you know, there's this great guy you have to meet. And then... 
she introduced me to my husband and so we now as a couple we uh, re reenact together it was about 11 years ago um, I met my husband we started doing this together after I got my uniform patched up at the seamstress hangar I hopped in this WC 62 weapons carrier to stop off at the mess tent to get some chow. We're preparing a wartime dish with spam, green beans, and russet potatoes in a, in a stock. The lives of World War II soldiers included a lot of one key nutrient. Soldiers got a lot of spam. We're just using rationed goods for our meal here. After sampling spam, reenactors get their hands dirty and do some problem solving. The most interesting thing about the United States Army in World War II is they were learning. They didn't know how to fight the war. So for us, we're, we're learning just like they would have. We're trying to figure out the best way to solve our feeding issues. After all that work, the day becomes dusk and the dancing begins. These passionate reenactors have many reasons for doing this, from a fun hobby to telling the stories of families who did the real thing. Really connecting back with my grandparents. Uh, both were in the war. World War II weekend runs through Sunday. In Burn Township, Tom Rader, 69 News. When World War II weekend started as it always does with the downtown invasion in Reading yesterday. Vintage military vehicles paraded through the city along with hundreds of reenactors portraying troops and civilians. In years past, a mock gun battle was one of the major attractions, but they didn't play out the battle this year. Organizers say they cut it for safety reasons. It was great theater, but it wasn't under a safe, controlled uh, environment based on the standards of having a, a battle reenactment among people. You don't want your spectators that close to the action. For more on World War II weekend, go to WFMZ.com. And coming up on 69 News, a long walk for a good cause will tell you why. An all-American city, Allentown, is in the running to be the first Pennsylvania city in 20 years to snag the title. Will this weekend be something to celebrate weather-wise? Brian will let us know with his full forecast.